time that's going to be. Amen. Dane and I were listening to some old songs this morning while we were getting ready. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard to get away from that old Red Book hymnal. It, it really is. I know a lot of churches are trying to move away from it. They say it's outdated and it's time for some new stuff. Listen, I got in on that old stuff. I plan to stay in on that old stuff. Amen. It's got something to it. It's got some meaning to it. It's got some glory to it, some goodness to it, just the greatness of God uh, down in it. Listen, if that circle is unbroken in heaven, it will not be because of God. It'll be because of you and I if we choose not to go there. It's a choice we have to make in life, and I pray that you've made that choice to love Him, serve Him, and make Him your Savior more than anything else in your entire life, that you know Him as Lord and Master and Savior. And listen, if you would, let's start all the can and wood come gather around the altar for a time of prayer. This morning, if you want to pray right where you are, then that's okay too. But we're going to pray and just beg God to help us once again this morning. Father, we love you. And God, again today, it is a privilege, it is an honor to be in thy house today. And God, we thank you, Lord, for what you've shown us and given us already this morning in the goodness of God, Lord, in the glory of God, in the singing today. Lord, the Sunday school hour today, we thank you for every word that's been spoken in your name. Uh, Lord, this morning, we thank you for everyone that's been touched already today. God, by the word of God, by the singing of God, by the, just by the power of God, uh, by the spirit of God that's in this place today. And Father God, we pray today that you'd help us and rain down upon us. Lord, in a special way, God, through the rest of the singing today, the preaching of the word. And Father, Lord, if you move in on us today, God, and get me out of the way and hide me behind the cross, Lord, it'd be the best day I ever had, and God, the best day that, that God, that you can make of it here at the church. Father, I pray, God, that if we're used today, we'll be used of you, we'll be a voice for you, and God, we'll be a vessel of honor, meet for the master's use, and Father God, I pray for all the sick today, Lord, you'd heal and lift up. In a mighty way, God, those that are down and out this morning, those that are going through very trying time uh, today, God, whatever the need may be in their life today, I pray, God, you'd meet it in a special way. Do things, God, you've never done before. Uh, Lord, even in this place today, and God, show us, Lord, that you're so real today. God, it'll be unbelievable to us. And Father, we'll thank you for that today. God, touch our nation today. Touch pastors and Oh, Lord, congregations all throughout the land, bless evangelists today and missionaries wherever they're preaching today, God, and giving the gospel, bless them and strengthen them and give them souls for the labor, meet their every need. Lord, go over and above in their life. God, help me. Lord, do the very best I can do as your pastor today, your preacher today, your servant and your leader today. God, we'll thank and love you, Lord, for what you have done for us already. And God, all that you're going to do right now, we praise you for it this morning. We ask all these things in Christ's wonderful name. And all God's children said, Ain't it good to be in the house of God this morning? Amen. Ain't it good to feel the presence of the Lord today? Amen. Yeah. Ain't it good to hear a good choir today? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Have an altar you can still come to and kneel and have the freedom to do it and the place where you can do it today. Have padded pews today. Amen. Isn't it good to be able to sit on some padded pews and not wooden benches today? God's been good, hasn't he? Carpet on the floor, the heat's on, the light's on. Amen. And you got the best looking preacher you could possibly have here today. I'm just saying, I'm glad I got three amens out of that. I appreciate you and love you in the Lord. I appreciate you being here today. I figured that would stir some of you up anyway. Amen. I thank God for you being here today. Thank the Lord for the what God's done already uh, this morning through the opening and through the Sunday school hour this morning, the choir. I sure appreciate those old songs this morning. And we're looking forward to see what God's going to do before we do get out of here today. Several announcements I do want to try to make. I mentioned this to the men this morning. Tomorrow night. 
Uh, I'm going to try to go down to Aarons Creek Baptist Church, which is down just the other side of Virgilana, uh, down here. If you would like to go, let me know. Text me or call me. Let me know. I'm going to try to leave tomorrow afternoon around 5.30, quarter to 6, running out to the revival. Uh, they got a revival meeting going on. Brother Ro uh, Ro uh, Robert Pruitt's a pastor down there, and uh, he's texted me about that last couple of revivals. And I hadn't been able to make it, but hopefully I can make it tomorrow night. And he's uh, uh, came and, and uh, sit in with us several times at our revival meeting, and I appreciate that. So if you would like to go, please let me know, uh, and you can come and ride with us uh, down there. Don't forget several things coming up to this afternoon about uh, for all the people that are, uh, I know we had a meeting last Sunday afternoon at 5. We have service tonight at 6. But for all the people that are working uh, in the stew, you have all your numbers together, all those that are on the call list. Uh, please try to be here about 5.30 this afternoon. I want to run over that for just a few minutes, get all of our numbers together again. I've got to put my final orders in in the morning for all the chicken and the beef uh, first thing in the morning. And so make sure you have all your numbers ready today uh, and get them to me. We'll get that done. And then this coming Friday, we need all the help we can get. Uh, this coming Friday to peel potatoes and onions and cook chicken and beef and get all those things ready Saturday morning uh, for the stew. Everybody knows where they're supposed to be. Uh, with that and then invite folks to come and sell stew and barbecue chicken plates please get your order in as quick as you can uh, so that we can get that done this coming weekend will be a very 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 busy uh, weekend y'all pray for me I, yesterday I, I don't mean this derogatory but uh, I've uh, got a funeral thrown my way too I knew I was going to have to do and I'm, I'm going to have to be in South Carolina uh, Thursday afternoon at four o'clock for a funeral and then drive back that night uh, so we can get started on Friday so y'all pray for us uh, while we're gone uh, for that this week too and so pray much for it that God will help us and use us in a special way and uh, then just to remember several things coming up here at the church with our sunrise service at, not, at seven o'clock on uh, April the 9th uh, by the way that's Blake's birthday that day too amen uh, our, our best little kid was born into the world that day wasn't it Blake amen that's what he says amen uh, but that's Blake's birthday uh, that day and so April the 9th that morning we're looking forward to that the men's retreat coming up. Don't forget that. We're gonna, we got a lot of things coming up. Thank you, Brother Cliff and all of them that uh, put together the food pantry yesterday. Uh, they were able to they sent out some bags yesterday to different ones uh, that needed it. So pray much about that. Uh, if you would, it will be a help to the people around, okay? A April the 15th, don't forget this. Uh, the children's, I'm sorry, April the 16th, the children's home will be here. Uh, and uh, we're excited about that, them being here. Young preacher preaching for us that day. Uh, and if, if everything goes well, uh, Brother Larry Walker, uh, you, I've, I've mentioned him to you several times, Brother Larry will be here preaching for us next Sunday, uh, and Brother Larry, he's an older preacher, been preaching a long, long time, and I want to give some of these older preachers an opportunity to come and preach, and so you pray for them, they go, they're supposed to travel in here next Saturday and be here with us, uh, and uh, help us out on Sunday, you'll be excited, you'll love Brother Larry, and uh, I thank God for him, so pray for him and his wife. And those will be coming with him next week, if you would, okay? Any other announcements today? Go ahead, Mama. Super Sunday, next Sunday morning at 930. All right. That's next Thursday night at 6.30, the ladies' meeting here at the church also. For two classes? All right, let's, let's work on that tonight. Just tell them how many need and we'll get those tonight. And uh, just we'll get teachers for that for next Sunday for the ladies. And to all you ladies that can be here next Sunday morning, don't forget the Super Sunday, Sunday that happens the fourth Sunday or last Sunday of every month. Uh, for all the ladies who'll be here for that. Uh, if you can, y'all pray for Jane. Jane is going to be uh, having at least one session with the ladies while we're in Texas uh, out there and working with the ladies out there on a Tuesday afternoon uh, before the service at night. So y'all pray for that uh, while we're going to. We're excited about being there and seeing what God's going to do, okay? Anything else today? Miss Kristen? Youth night on the 31st. Okay, from 6 to 8, 8.30. 80.30, amen. Chris said, y'all leaving after 8.30. Uh, 6 to 8.30, uh, Josh and Kristen's house for the youth uh, on the 31st, so don't forget that, okay? Amen. Anything else? 
All right, good to have you in the house of the Lord this morning. Appreciate all of our visitors being with us today. Thank you for being here uh, with us today. Michael, come on, let's take an offering this morning, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll get that done. You got a song for us this morning? Amen. 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 All right, we're going to ushers to come this morning. And while they're coming, I'd like to apologize on behalf of our pastor this morning. Um, sometimes he gets older and his old age, he gets his dates mixed up sometimes. And really that best kid date was actually September the 15th <laughs> and not April the 9th. So I'd like to apologize on his behalf this morning uh, before, we, before <laughs> we get started this morning. Um, so yeah, that's, that's the truth. In that case, Brother G, would you please lead us in prayer this morning? <laughs> Amen. Let's all stand. 346. I know my name is there. 346. written in lights anywhere. Amen. Thank God that we know that we know that we know. Miss Nicole, Miss Charlie, Bentley, y'all come on up this morning. These kids are going to sing one for us today. And uh, boy, we thank the Lord for the kids. Amen. And singing for the glory of God. Miss Charlie, y'all come on and sing today.
children do with skinned up knees and tennis shoes? He may not look like we're worth a lot. But being loved by God's own son makes us as big as anyone. Doesn't mean who we think, doesn't mean we're not. And we're God's little people. We got a lot of weird relation. And we're God's little people. God's little people are God's big people sometimes. David was a kid with a sling in his hand. And we're God's little people. We got a lot of we're gonna let it shine. And we're God's little people. God's little people are God's big people sometimes. Zacchaeus is little just in a sycamore tree so you can see Jesus passing through. But he slid down so fast to say, there's still no bark on that tree today. Jesus said, I'm coming home with you. Lord, I like to give my best to you, but there's a lot of things that I can do. I know I'm not tall and I'm not strong. But for small people everywhere, we got something for the world to hear. Lord, I like to sing to you this song. And we're God's little people. We got a lot of we're going to let it shine. And we're God's little people. God's little people are God's Little people are God's big people sometimes. God's little people are God's big people sometimes. Never underestimate the power of a child. Amen. God says something, little children, to come unto me. Amen. Except you humble yourself and come to the child, you'll not see the kingdom of God. And I thank God for the children. Let me let me do this this morning. Hadn't done it in a, in a few Sundays now. I know we got a few birthdays. We've had a few birthdays this past week. Got a few birthdays coming up. So let me catch all of our birthdays this morning. And uh, Brother Jason got a Brother Jason got a big one coming up. Amen. Brother Jason gonna be the big 50 years old, from what I can understand, on Tuesday. Amen. And that's a milestone right there. Who else had a birthday or anniversary this past week? Got one. Who? Miss Kathy Gentry. Come on back. Come up here, Miss Kathy. She had slumped all the way down. In the, you, you would have thought she was one of God's little people when I look back at her. She was down on the bottom of the pew almost trying to crawl under it. Amen. Amen. Miss, Miss Kathy just turned 39, by the way. Amen. Brother Walter had one on Thursday. So how old are you, Brother Walter? 49. He looked at you. Look at another one that got caught here. See you right now. Miss Diana just turned 38. Amen. Amen. They finally admitted it. Anybody else? Who's got one back here? Who? Brother Johnny got one? Brother Johnny, come on up here, sir. Come on up here. We ain't saying to you yet. Come on. Brother, Brother Johnny finally turned 61. <laughs> Amen. Finally turned 61. Brother Johnny said he could look back and catch those days be good, wouldn't it, Brother Johnny? Amen. Brother Johnny got so many grandkids, he don't he can't even name them. He said, hey, you, come here. And I can, under, I can understand that. Amen. Any anniversaries today? 
any anniversaries. Amen. All right, let's all stand and sing happy birthday. would be dead and I'm thankful that I'm about to turn another year here very shortly down the road Blake was requested last week to sing one for us I'm gonna get him to sing this morning just before I preach sing for us brother There's a special place in heaven where those unborn babies play and they're rocked in arms by mama whose chance has to do Price of heaven is expensive, but don't you worry about the cost, oh, that was paid in full by Jesus.
Well, hallelujah. Dane and I were listening to this morning to that old song, Had It Not Been, Had It Not Been for a Man Called Jesus. Had It Not Been for a Place Called Calvary. I thank God today for Calvary's. We were listening to that this morning. Both of us just began to weep and uh, think about the man that died for us, gave his life for us, so we could have life and have life eternal. And man, I've listened to those songs, Blake sang those songs, the others sing them, and we will listen to a bunch of old songs this morning that's got heaven just wrapped all around them. And uh, I can sit back, I don't know about y'all, but I can sit back and just get in the glory for a little while. Just thinking about heaven and what it's going to be like on the other side. I thank God for what we have down here. But there's a brighter day coming. And there's a greater day coming. Amen. And we're going to walk on the streets of gold. Amen. We're going to sit by the Savior up there. And I've said this before. It may take me 10,000 years to get to the front where he's at. But the best part is I know I'm going there. Amen. I know I'm going to get there. And I thank God for that. Boy, it feels good in this place this morning. Turn your Bibles to Ephesians chapter number 5. Y'all pray for me this morning. I have dealt with God this week, and God has dealt with me. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, I've been tore up this week and upset this week, and we've been trying to make decisions this week uh, in the ministry and things to do, and and. Um, Especially that trip to the Philippines. And by the way, we did book our tickets this week. We'll be leaving on the 17th of April. And uh, boy, we went through. I didn't go through as much, but Jane did. I was praying for her. And I had come to the conclusion uh, that I was going to not go and call the trip off. I'll be honest with you. It, it's a, you. I don't know if you've ever booked anything overseas that far away or not. It's about a 26, 27 hour flight uh, to get there. We'll be preaching the whole time we're there. There's a lot going on. The schedule is crazy when we get there. And uh, I just come to the conclusion because Jane was under so much stress. Uh, I told her the other day that I'm at peace with, uh, with not going. I really did. And uh, I didn't want it to take away from what we're doing in Texas in a couple of weeks because I've been praying my heart out for that trip and for that meeting and I want to go and pour my heart out and pour myself out to that church. Uh, there's a church out there that's seeking help and they're seeking God. Jane talked to one of the ladies there yesterday. Uh, they're just seeking God and they're seeking help and I want to be able to help them and I didn't want to take away from that. And so while I was praying for her, and I prayed, and I prayed earnestly every day. I was praying numerous times a day. I was praying at night. I was praying in the morning. And while I was praying for her and uh, praying about the trip and praying about me and, and my life, and y'all, y'all gonna, you, 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 it's amazing to me how God puts things together. Uh, God began to run some thoughts through my heart and through my mind. And they gave me some scriptures to go to, and I began to go to those scriptures, and I began to read, and uh, I still head around with God, because I'm saying, God, I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't know if y'all ever been at a time that you didn't understand your life or understand God in your life, and uh, you didn't know what was going on, but I've been there before, 
uh, and it's a tough place to be. And so this week I was there, uh, and I'll be honest with you, there are some days it got tough. There are some nights it got tough, and prayer time got tough. And uh, God spoke to me uh, a couple of times just through His Spirit this week trying to show me some things uh, because I had made some decisions uh, that God wasn't pleased with. And uh, God had reminded me of one thought this week uh, a couple of times. And here's the thought that I'm going to give you. Then I'm going to read the scripture that God's placed upon my heart for the day and pray that I can be a help to the church. There's no way I'll finish this this morning for all the thoughts God had put on my mind uh, this week. But I want to give you this thought today. You may want to jot this down because it's probably going to help you sometime down the road when you get in a bind and you think you're supposed to do this or not supposed to do this. Uh, and when God opens doors, you know, and you're trying to close them. But God gave me this thought this week. And listen to this. His will is not your choice. His will is not your choice. Now, I want to say this to you. Whether you live in His will or not is your choice. But His actual will is not your choice. And so I began to pray and beg God, and, and God had to get, got me to turn to some scriptures here in the book of Ephesians, chapter number 5. Paul is dealing here with the believer's walk in Christ and he's dealing with spirit-filled believers. And listen, I will show you this in the Word of God, that God desires for every Christian, every believer, to be spirit-filled. Uh, that is the desire of God for us, that we would be spirit-filled. And so as I begin to read these scriptures this week and look at the believer's walk here in God, one verse Stuck out to me here in Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 17. The Bible says, Wherefore be ye not unwise, but listen to what he says, but understanding, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And I don't know about you, but that's a very hard phrase right there trying to understand God or understand the will of God in your life is not an easy thing and what God wants you to do. God also reminded me, and you can turn over there if you want to. If not, I'll quote it for you. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 5 and verse number 18, the Bible says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God. But listen to what he said. This is the will of God. In Christ Jesus concerning you. Your will is not what concerns me this morning. And my will should not be what concerns you this morning. My will for God and God's will for me is what should be concerning me. And God's will for you is what should be concerning you today. Amen. And so God got me concerned this week about his will. Amen. I would like to make the choices in my life, but there's times that God do, does not allow to, us to do that because his will is not our choice. And God says we need to understand the will of God and what the will of God is and then we need to understand the will of God in Christ Jesus for us personally. And today I want to try to share some thoughts with you that God's given me this week to try to help you with that thought that His will is not your choice. But living His will is your choice. The most important thing in your life is the will of God concerning you, or it should be. It should be that the, every thought that you get up with during the day, everything that you do during the day, every decision that you make for work or school or, or church or what you put on or what you, matter of fact, I, I wish y'all had been in here for Blake's opening this morning. Uh, you would have loved what I'm preaching right now. I, I, I may get him come back up and testify here in just a little bit, that opening that he did this morning. I'd, 
I turned my Bible over and showed my wife what the title of my message was today when he was doing his opening this morning, which no doubt nailed what I'm talking about today. Many of people, millions of people, live and die year after year after year, and they never understand and never undertake the will of God. They never understand it. They never undertake it as far as taking on the will of God. But there's times I'm going to tell you that if you're going to do anything at all for God, you will have to be completely in the will of God. You will have to sell out to God. You will have to deny the flesh and everything about the flesh and everything about your life, everything that you've ever been taught or you've ever been learned down through the years. You will have to deny that in order to get in the will of God and where God would have you to be. This week, God showed me several things here about the will of God that I want to uh, show you. And I think there's three decisions that you and I will have to make in life if we're going to be in the will of God. Number one, we're going to have to decide who's going to be my Lord. Joshua said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Joshua had made his mind up who his God was. And in our life, we're going to have to decide who's going to be my Lord. Is it going to be the Lord God Almighty? Is it going to be family? Is it going to be friends? Is it going to be sports? Is it going to be recreation? Is it going to be church? Uh, listen, is it going to be a boyfriend? Is it going to be a, a girlfriend? Who is going to control my life? And who's going to make the decisions every day in my life that control everything that I do? We're going to have to ask ourselves the question, who's going to be my Lord? Who's going to be my Lord? For many Christians today, listen, they have many lords. Amen. I understand there's only one God, but for many Christians today, there's many lords to them because today they answer to this one, tomorrow they answer to that one, and then when they show up at church on Sunday, they try to answer to the Lord God Almighty. Amen. But we have to decide and make a decision in our life on who's going to be our Lord. And if we're going to be in the will of God, the perfect will of God, we're going to have to answer that question and make that decision in our life. Young people, let me just say to you now, decide who's going to be your Lord. That don't, don't let the world take over who God is. Don't let that girlfriend, that boyfriend, that schooling, that, uh, that thing you were, that career that you want to do, go ahead and decide now who's going to be Lord of your life. And we have to make that decision in our life. We have to also decide what's going to be my labor. Who am I working for? Who am I serving? Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20, very clear in what God's called his disciples and Christians to do, to go ye therefore and teach all nations, tell all nations, teaching them to observe whatsoever things I have uh, taught you, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. We've got to make a decision in life who we're going to labor for and who we're going to work for. Uh, too many times, I don't know about y'all, but every one of us catch ourselves wearing ourselves out for the things of the world, do we not? We wear ourselves out for work. We wear ourselves out to, uh, to recreate. We wear ourselves out uh, to play sports. We wear ourselves out uh, to get family where family needs to go and, and do the thing. We wear ourselves out trying to keep a house clean and trying to keep a yard up and trying to keep a vehicle. Well, a lot of us, eh? Amen. <laughs> I can't say that about the younger generation, but, amen. <laughs> but we've got to decide what's going to be our labor in life. Who's going to be our Lord, but what's going to be our labor, and what are we going to spend our time doing in this life down here? By the way, time is short. Amen. Uh, we're not promised tomorrow already, amen. We made it till today, but we're not promised tomorrow, amen. We've got to decide who we're going to labor for, Listen to this right here. We also got to decide who's going to be my lover. Woo! Jesus said this in, in John 14 and 15, If ye love me, keep my commandments. He said you're to love me with heart, mind, body, and soul. Everything that you and I have, 
We are to love the Lord God with all that we have. Yes. Who's going to be our lover? Who are we going to love first? Who, let's, what, what love are we going to put above other things in our life? Listen, we love the things of this world. I can tell you that now. Oh, yeah. Even the Christian, the church has gotten to the place uh, that we love the things of this world. I, I was doing some visits this weekend, this week, and I was talking to some older uh, people in the Lord, and uh, we got talking about church and the things of the church and the sanctuary and the temple and the uh, tabernacle and all of those things. Why uh, people are getting away from that, I'll tell you why. Because they love the things of the world. Can I tell you this right here? Hey, the tabernacle in the wilderness was a holy place. Hey, the temple in Jerusalem, I got cold chills right here. And the temple in Jerusalem is a holy place. The sanctuary of God in the church is a holy place, amen. And if they can get you out of the holy place and get you somewhere else, it's a whole lot easier to worship or try to worship with sin in our life because it takes you out of the holy place because we love the world more than we love the holy place. They're trying to pull people out of it. They, you know, I hear it all the time, man. We, you know, the church is obsolete. I, one of these days, I'm, I, I, was, I was reading. Any of y'all remember Brother Mays Jackson? I was reading one of his old sermons the other day. And you know what it was? He said, here's, here's the name of the sermon. He said, we ought to bust them up in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it's my type of sermon. He said, we ought to bust that devil in the head and let him know who's boss. He said, we ought to bust that crowd in the head out there uh, in the world that persecuted. It, it went on and on. And he busted up a lot of stuff. Amen. I said, that's my kind of preaching right there. I'll probably use that with somewhere uh, down the road. But listen, it's about time to bust that stuff up. God's still God. The church is still the church. The sanctuary is still the church. Uh, sanctuary. The sanctuary is still supposed to be holy. I don't care what anybody else says. And we've got to determine who's going to be our Lord, who are we going to labor for, and listen, who's going to be our lover in our life? And who are we going to love above me? And in order to get in God's will, we're going to have to answer all three of those questions. God reminded me of those this week, and I was telling God, God, listen, it's okay if I don't get to go. God said, you didn't make that choice to go. I, I didn't call anybody in the Philippines, and I didn't call anybody in Texas and said, hey, can I come to that group? Right. Amen. And by the way, they called my number. Amen. Right. I was the one who got the call. Listen, it had to be, it had to be the work of God because could have called a thousand other pastors uh, here in this country to do it. There's no question about that. But listen, it was, am, am I out of juice this morning? I'm not out. Just that little box is out of juice. I'm not out of juice, Mike. Right. Go ahead. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He said, Mark said, keep preaching. I'll just follow with you. Amen. But listen, he says that it's to be the will of God concerning Christ Jesus in you. And God reminded me this week, it's to be the will of God concerning Christ Jesus in you. It's not about your choice and what you want to do. I've told you what to do. Now you can make a choice whether you want to serve me or not and get out of the will of God or you can just listen to the will of God and decide who your Lord is, who you're going to labor for, and who your lover is going to be. And God reminded me this week until you get in the pages, the printed pages of this book right here, you'll never know what the will of God is. Right. I began to look at some things this week on trying to understand the will of God. I'm not going to ask any of you to go there today. Amen. Uh, you're not going to understand it today. You're probably not going to understand it tomorrow. Uh, not unless God's got a work for you to do right now. And you need to go and just get in your closet and beg God and cry out to God and and get along with God and get along, get away from everybody else and, and get in the will of God as best you can. There's three things that God showed me uh, this week about trying to understand the Word of God, the will of God. Trying to understand. Number one, we find in God's Word that there is the printed will of God. There is the printed will of God. Isn't it amazing that we want to go to everything else in the world to get all the answers for everything? Uh, I, I'm not against people that have to go to uh, psychiatrists. I probably need to run by one every now and then and just tell them hello or something. Now, I'm not sure they can help me with anything at all. Uh, amen. My wife tells me sometimes there is no help. Amen. Outside of God. 
Uh, but listen, I, I, I'm not against try, having to do some things in life from time to time. But listen, we all not put our dependence, all our dependence in those people in the world. Amen. Listen, if we want to find the will of God, God said there is a printed will of God. He said, I printed it some thousand years ago, and I preserved it, and I set it down in time for you to understand what the true will of God is. The problem is we don't want to go to the printed pages of the book to find out what the will of God is, but I'm telling you, if we get in here, God will tell us and show us what his will truly is for our life in everything that we do. He put it in his word, and he desires for us to rightly divide the word of truth. No, we're in here. Does he say rightly divide the word of man? I don't have any people I've counseled with over the years. By the way, look, at, uh, look up here at me. I'm your pastor. I don't even like counseling <laughs> of any kind. That's a horrible preacher. Get over it. I don't like counseling. I do not like talking to people that don't listen to me. How many of y'all like listening, talking to people who don't listen to you? Hey Amen. I, I, I don't enjoy just sitting around looking people in the eye and talking to them. And, and I tell by the look on their face and the look in their eye, it's going through here and right out here. They ain't heard nothing I said. They get right up out of there. And they just as soon as I walk out the door, they go get on the phone and go, you know, I, my preacher was over here. He said, oh, well, I don't think y'all to do that, you know. I, that, I think if you, and you just wasted all my time. Amen? I don't like cancer. I don't like when husband and wife fight. God help us. I have gone so far in my counseling. You young people listen to this. And you old people too because I may end up at your house one day. Well, they're sitting there arguing. I had to look at them high and say, I can't help you. Y'all going to kill each other. I don't believe in divorce. The Bible don't believe in divorce. But if we don't do something, y'all going to be dead. I'm just asking you to separate, get away from each other, and I got to go. <laughs> Leave them. Yes, sir. Have you done it? Ask my wife. Amen. I said, you won't listen, and you won't listen. I didn't say that. I said, you won't shut up, and you won't shut up. Amen. You don't want to listen. I'm gone. Let me pray. I don't know how much good it's going to do, but let me pray and get out of here. And walk out the door. I don't like listening to that junk. I don't like you. Preacher, I ain't going to ever call you for counseling. <laughs> you want to see my mad face about that? <laughs> Amen. I'll do what I have to do. Amen. But, I, but listen, if I come to your house and I counsel you over your marriage, Listen, your marriage ain't going right. I can pick on her, amen. I ought to pick on that, but I'm going to pick on this, amen. If she's some loudmouth woman, you know what I'm going to tell her? You're a loudmouth woman. Shut up and leave me alone. <laughs> Bible says I'd rather dwell in a corner of the barn than live in a, a wide house with a loudmouth woman. I mean, that's scriptural, amen. I, but, Brother Gene, if I go there, that's just what I'm going to have to say. That's the printed word of God. And the chances are they ain't going to like it. <laughs> Brother Josh, and when I tell her that, even though it was Christian, you're going to be mad because I told you. Josh said, no, I ain't. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to look at us and say, Christian, that's Bible. The preacher said it. <laughs> Live by it. Amen. 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 God said, I want you to understand something about understanding the Word of God. There's some things that we need to understand. There is the printed will of God that God has written down. And he said, if you'll get in the printed pages of this book right here, I will help to show you how to get in the will of God. We don't have to run all over the world. We don't have to call everybody and surely don't have to go to Facebook. <laughs> Whew. Lord, help us. There's more opinions on that you can put in a dictionary. Amen. I never get my advice from Facebook. And by the way, I don't give advice on Facebook either. It ain't worth it. Amen. But there's a printed word of God here that God would have us to rightly divide here in the word of God. Let me give you several things about the printed word of God. And I love this right here. I probably shouldn't say this morning this morning because we're live on Facebook and this pricks some 
people every now and then, but if the Calvinists need this today, they can have it. It's printed in the Word of God that every sinner be saved. Uh, I seen one post uh, just yesterday <laughs> that for us to believe, listen to me, he posted yesterday that for us to believe that God died for everybody, that we'd have to deny a lot of the scriptures in the Word. Yeah, it, it, it was, it was, and then he went on to list about six things we'd have to deny. Oh, don't think I didn't want to give some advice. <laughs> Don't think I did want to give some advice. But can I say this? You know about how much we're going to have to deny to say that Christ didn't die for all? <laughs> We'd have to deny a lot. It's in the printed word of God that he died for every sinner. He died for every man, woman, boy, or girl. He died for everyone that will ever be born on the face of the earth. He died for all, and he means for all to be saved. It's in the printed word of God. Listen, that Christ loved all. He died for all. He came here to die for all. Listen, he sent it on the right hand of the Father today, making intercession for all, amen, that we can all still be saved and let, forgiven of our sins and still have a pathway to glory. He's still God today. It's printed in the book. I'm glad that the will of God is printed. And I don't have to take man's word for it. I don't have to go out and listen to somebody on Facebook or somebody that don't like what we believe. Amen. I'm glad we can just believe the word of God. Amen. Listen to this. I pray you'll listen and hear me right here. It's printed in the word of God that every saved person be separated. Just for you, those y'all that might not believe me, turn back to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. Let's look at verse number 17. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6, verse number 17. The Bible says, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, what does he say? And I will receive you. It's printed in the Word of God that Christians ought to be separated from the world. They ought to be separated from unclean things. Amen. Now, we live in a generation that wouldn't accept this today. Amen. They, they say, I, I'm, I'm not, I don't care whether they accept it or not. It's still God's printed Word. Amen. Amen. To me, it's just like feeding a dog. You know, you have the, listen, you, you dog, dog lovers, animal, uh, cat lovers, God help your soul if you love cats. But anyway, <laughs> you go out there and put a bowl of food out, then you worry to death he ain't going to eat it. That's his problem. Amen. He gets hungry, he'll eat it. Amen. But we put it out there, same thing with the Word of God. God said, hey, I, I put it out there. If you don't eat it, that's up to you. But listen, the Word of God is printed there that every person uh, that's saved should be separated for God. We ought to live a separate life. We ought to live a clean life. We ought to be separated from the things of the world. There's some things that we ought not do. The world ought to know that we're separated. The world ought to know that we are different. Amen. There ought to be something about us. Uh, that stands out to the world. Listen, why? Because we know that it's the will of God. That is the will of God for us to be separated. It's the will of God for us to be what Christ would have us to be. Not only that, we find here in Ephesians chapter number 5 and verse number 18 that I read earlier, every separated person, this is the will of God, that every separated person for Christ ought to be spirit-filled. He just said it in 1 Thessalonians 5, 18. And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. That concerns you, and that concerns you, and that concerns me, that we ought to be separated for the will of God in our life. And we ought to be spirit-filled because we are separated Christians. There ought to be something down inside of us that desires more of God. I, I don't know about y'all. I'm not happy with what I had yesterday. Now, I thank God for yesterday, but yesterday won't get me through today. Amen. 
it's just like eating. Spit feels just like eating. I, 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 ate, I ate well yesterday. Amen. But I'm hungry today. Matter of fact, I woke up hungry this morning. And, and I'm hungry right now. I know what you think. If you get hungry, we'll quit early. No. I'm going to be starving by the time we're done. There's a difference. Amen. <laughs> but I'm hungry today also. And I'm going to wake up hungry tomorrow. And God is saying here for the spirit-filled Christian, for the, those that are separated, listen, every day of our life we wake up hungry for the things of God. We want God today. We want more of God tomorrow. We want more of God tomorrow. I need more of God uh, the next day. When I wake up, i got to have God uh, this day. I've got to do something for God uh, this day. Terry and I'll tell her, Sonia, she, she met the pastor the other day that led me to the Lord. Matter of fact, I've told you this. The reason I'm going to Texas in a couple of weeks uh, is because I was preaching at his church five years ago. Somebody heard me preach, amen, and called me to Texas to come preach a revival meeting. That's crazy. That is beyond me. But she met Brother Bobby Tate. The other day, there was, a, there was somewhere at a, at a, at a car uh, uh, thing there, a uh, place getting some uh, stuff worked on. And she, uh, listen, she got into some things. And people always like to ask these off-the-wall questions on what you believe about this and what you believe. About. And just in that case, they got to talking about Jesus turned the ward into wine. Was it fermented or not? Amen. <laughs> they didn't know who they was messing with. <laughs> Matter of fact... The pastor that led me to the Lord, I understand. He didn't even probably speak up during that conversation. He thought she had it. Them guys, they done tackled a line and didn't realize it. I'd have left to been a fly on the wall and said, you dummy, you shouldn't have asked that question. Especially to a woman that knows the Bible. Amen. But she knew what separation was. Amen. She said she got done, Brother Bobby told, Tate told her this. He said, just stay in that book right there. He said, the greatest advice I can give you is just to stay in that book right there. It's a printed will of God. Amen. He said, just stay in that book. It don't matter what the world thinks. It don't matter what the world says. It doesn't matter what they don't like. It, listen, it don't matter what they don't believe. It don't matter whether they accept it or not. Right. None of that matters. But it's the will of God that we stay in it. Amen. It's the will of God that we plant it down inside of us. Right. It's the will of God that we're separated because of that. The world don't have to like it. Your family don't have to like it. Your friends don't have to like it. Listen, the people that hang around you don't have to like it. The people you work with don't have to. It, it don't mean that anybody has to like it. His will is not our choice. His will is his will. And it's not our choice to do that, to, to make his will. It's our choice to live in his will. But we cannot make his will. Listen, by the way, we're not going to change God's mind on his will. Just so you know. We just get to make the decision whether we're going to live by it or, or, or not live by it. Not, not, not only is that I, I find in God's word the, the printed will of God. Listen to this right here. I find the personal will of God. The personal will of God. Now, every one of us in here, every one of us in here have a personality. All of us. Some are a lot different than others. Some are close to others. Some are way out there. Y'all have met those people got personalities way out there? Like way out there? I, mean, I, I met, I met, and that, by the way, when they get around me, they think mine's way out there too. <laughs> so, I'm, I mean, I'm just as guilty on this side as they, they are on that side, you know. Uh, you, have you, you, ever, you ever just been so out there for Christ that somebody just looked at you, brother, they said, you crazy? You believe that? Oh, yeah. You just give them that dumb look. Oh, yeah. You know, I said, but I don't have any education. I didn't grow up learning none of that stuff. I didn't know you were supposed to say yes or something that wasn't right. Amen? I said, yeah, yeah I, I, I believe all that. Why would you believe that? Just because God's Word said it. How do you? I just believe it by faith. You know? You know how dumb you all believe that? No, I really don't. <laughs> I, mean, you think I'm dumb, but I don't know how dumb I am to believe that because I don't know no difference. Amen? Right. It's God's printed word. <laughs> but every one of us have a personality, and every one of us have a personal will. Now, here's the average Christian. 
When God's word speaks about a personal will, we have the idea that that's our personal will. Amen? Well, that, that, that's, that's me personally. That's who I am, and that's, that's what I decided I'd do for God. It's not your personal will. It's God's personal will for you. Amen? I mean, you can have a personal will, but that don't mean it's God's personal will for you. I've got a personal will sometimes. <laughs> uh, I can tell you that now, but uh, I can tell you God's had to remind me, just so you know, that's not your choice. I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard God speak to you. God, listen, God didn't speak to me audibly, but down in my spirit, that's all I could hear. God's got, it's not your choice. You, you, you didn't make that choice. I made that choice for you. I'm like, yeah, but, but God, I mean, I have to make a choice. He said, no, you're going to make a choice whether you're going to serve me or not. You don't get to make a choice in my will and what I said for you to do. You don't get to make a choice in your will and what I, and how I said for you to live. You don't get to make a choice in that. You only get to make a choice in whether you are going to live by that or not. Now, there again, for the Calvinists, they say that you don't have that choice either. I disagree with them, but that's okay. Uh, listen, just read the Word of God. It's printed in there. Amen. But you don't, you don't have... God's personal will, you and I only have our personal will. But when God talks about personal wills, it is God's personal will for us, and it's up to us whether we make that right choice or not. Let me give you some things about God's personal will, and th this, this will probably this will kick a lot of uh, people right here. But listen, can I, can I tell you this? Your choice, your church, listen to me. I hear this all the time. You know you do too. Well, just go to the church of your choice. That's not biblical. God has a personal will in where you go to church. God has a personal will in where you attend church and which church you're in. Amen? Why does God have a personal will in that? Because the chance are you and I may make a bad decision in that, Brother Gene. I would just go where I feel good. Amen? Well, they make me feel good over there. Yeah, but, I mean, if I lie to you, I can make you feel good, too. <laughs> Amen, <laughs> Buck. <laughs> I, I, I mean, if, 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 if. Dan, can I tell this I tried to tell you yesterday? <laughs> I tried to tell Jane, Jane yesterday, and I couldn't get through. Jane was afraid I was going to say something ugly. It, this guy, this guy had had faith, had faith in God, and uh, he, well, Mike, he, he had faith to know he was going to heaven, and there was no question about it in his mind. He had faith, brother Rob, that I'm, I'm going to heaven. But he got to studying about the will of God and knew he needed to be in the will of God too. Amen. To go to heaven, he needed to be in the will of God. He had faith in God. Needed to be in the will of God, and he said, he said, but there's a scripture over there that says that. When we get there, that we're going to answer for the things we've done in our body, whether they be good or bad. Yes, Amen. That's what Paul said. And he said, Brother Gene, I, I don't know if I've done anything, you know, to answer that when I get there. And so, so what long after that, the man died. He got up to the gates up there, St. Peter. St. Peter stopped him, and I know this uh, don't happen, but Saint, he said, St. Peter stopped him and said, hey, he said, I see you, you had faith and you were trying to be in the will of God. He said, but what do you think merits you to get into heaven? And he said, well, I'll just tell you. He said, I try to be, be faithful and I try to be in the will of God. And I knew I needed to do a good deed, you know, to try to answer the things I've done in my body. He said, so I'll tell you what I did. He said, I pulled up in a parking lot. He said, there was a Hells Angels motorcycle club out there in the middle of that parking lot. He said, it was hundreds of them. And he said, the motorcycle, he said, it was some of the biggest, meanest, ugliest guys I've ever seen in my entire life. And he said, they were picking on the little guys there. And he said, I walked up in that crowd. I picked out the biggest, meanest, ugliest one that I could find. And he said, I slapped him side his head, and I kicked his bike over in the parking lot. 
He said, I stepped back, said, all you suckers pay attention because you mess with me. He said, you're going to get the same thing. Said St. Peter said, looked at him, said, now how long ago was that? He said, just yesterday. We, <laughs> I know it, Miss Lee. <laughs> Miss Lee has done lost it up here. Listen, we better know <laughs> that we're in the will of God. Amen? We better know that it's the will of God. And church is not our choice. He said that we're not to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. And we ought to be where the, listen, we ought to be where the Spirit of God is. That's what I tell his family the other day. I said, what they're trying to do. And they're trying to take people out of the holy place. Amen. And listen, I, listen, we have a tent meeting. Listen, we can meet with God in a tent. We can meet with God in a house. But listen, God set up the temple tabernacle in the wilderness to meet with him. He set up the temple in Jerusalem. Listen, he ordained the church in the New Testament church. He ordained the sanctuary to be a holy place. And God means for us to go to the holy place. And listen, if it is not a holy place, it is not God's choice. It needs to be a holy place. All this junk, well, you ought to just go to the church of your choice. No, you ought to go to church of God's choice. You ought to get in the will of God, get in the word of God, in the printed word of God, in the printed word of God, and find out what a church is and what a church ought to be, and attend a church that God ordained. Amen? It's not a church of our choice. Oh, we got the idea we can attend anywhere we want to in worship. No, you can't. No, you can't. Listen, the only time you're going to worship God is in the holy place. Why? Because God reigns in the holy place. God abides in the holy place. Listen, we're going to only worship God in the holy place. And we have to understand that. They're making all kinds of means out in the world for you to go everywhere and say, hey, you come here and worship. You come, as I told them on Wednesday night in the Bible study. Listen, I, I forget how many uh, times it was. It was a hundred and... Uh, ten times I believe that the church is mentioned in the New Testament alone. I have not found a worship center in the Word of God yet. I've not found it listed. But I found the church 110 times in the New Testament. Amen? It's not the church of our cho choice. It's God's personal choice for us to be in a church that honors Him. To be in a sanctuary that's holy for him. To be at a place where we can meet with God. You know who went to church? The brethren. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> to meet with the brethren. I, I, I said this before and over in the Old Testament over there, and Brother Mike, he remembers this message where we talked about it several times when I, I preached that message on Chance of Rain 100%. Listen, there's, there's time they wouldn't even let them in the, in the, in the building. Right. They, they wouldn't let them through the doors. Why? They wouldn't write, they wouldn't write with God. Right. Amen. Well, listen, God has a personal will for us in the choice of our church. It's God's choice. All right, you want to, you, you Will's not here this morning, is he, Brother Joey? He, he would like this one. And some of you young, uh, other young people, are you, some of you boys think about getting married, you girls think about getting married. Your companion is not your choice. not your choice. <laughs> can I tell you, can I tell you why divorce rate is 54% in America and 50% in the church? Because we made it our choice. That's why. We made it our choice. But it's not our choice. God has somebody out there for you. Amen. Listen, if you, you're, you're not married yet and you plan to, plan to get married, listen, that don't don't just jump on the first bandwagon and come along just because she's a pretty girl. She may not be God's choice for you. Just because he's a handsome young guy, you know, got arms this big around, you know, and, and he's, a, he's a star football player, he may not be God's choice for you. Amen. It may be the ugliest rascal you've ever seen in your entire life. Amen. Jane married one of the skinniest, ugliest guys she could have ever marry. Now, that was her first husband, but I. <laughs> I I'm lying about that. That was that boy she dated before me. <laughs> He's probably watching today, by the way. 
Amen. I, I, I de- <laughs> She's going to kill me. <laughs> she wasn't married before me, by the way. Amen. I was up here preaching one day, and I'll never forget this. I said, Jane, you used to date some of the ugliest, I mean, ugliest guys. And I thought after I got done, I said, I hope ain't none of them in here today. <laughs> I didn't want to have to fight when I left. Amen. But let's, <laughs> I'm glad. I'm thankful for God's choice. Amen. I'm thankful for God's choice. I told y'all this story before. And, and I'm glad and I'm glad she did it to me. And my, our church knows this. Well, you knew this. First time I looked at this girl right here and told her I loved her. <laughs> she looked at me and said, I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. Whew. That hurt, Brother Sammy. I kid you not, man. I've had the opportunity to date her several times and dating the prettiest girl in town, Miss Jane. And for her to tell me that, oh my, you talking about broken heart. And just broken. I mean, I'm like, oh, and listen, I didn't even know God. Amen. Didn't know anything about God. And all of a sudden, she, she tells me, no, but listen, I'm thankful for God's choice. Amen. Amen. That companion ought to be God's choice. Right. Wait on God. I mean, listen, too many times, listen, uh, listen, I'm thankful for those that have made it and worked out over the years and, uh, and, and gotten married, listen, and fell in love. I tell people this all the time. It, it, it ain't because Jane and I love so much, each other so much we stay together 40 years. It ain't, no, 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 no. It's because God had to intervene a few times. Amen. Amen. <laughs> God had to intervene a few, intervene a few times to tell and let, remind. No. <laughs> 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 remind me of who I was. <laughs> Y'all thought I was going to say her, right? <laughs> There's a few times God had to intervene and go, hey, 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 love her like Christ loved the church. Right. I don't want to, Lord. <laughs> that ain't your choice. I gave her to you. Love her like Christ loved the church. Have you heard her talking to me this morning? Did you hear what she said, God? She was a smart aleck. Jane Devin Nanny has a little sass to her. And she don't really. As a matter of fact, I, I was working on a message the other day on, on um, how, did I, how did I phrase it? Um, it had something to do with sarcasm. <laughs> it, it, it was good sarcasm. Amen. Uh, serious sarcasm. Every now and then, Jane has some of that, <laughs> and I don't like it. <laughs> I see your point, brother Tracy. I don't. I don't like even when it's serious, even when it's truthful sarcasm. How many of you men say I just enjoy my wife being sarcastic to me, liar? No, it's God. It's God and God alone. How'd y'all make it 40 years? God, you love her? Yeah, but God, you plan to live with another 40? Yeah, but God, (laughs) plan to go home with her this afternoon? Yeah, but God, (laughs) my daughter said this yesterday. I heard her on the phone. Her and Jane were away together. Tabitha gets up, and I'm sure it's like always, her hair's probably strung everywhere. And she's got a nightgown on. She walks in the bathroom, comes back by the mirror, and she said, Noah's a lucky man. <laughs> Jane said, I tell Daddy the same thing. Amen. <laughs> hey, you're a lucky man no matter what. God! <laughs> I didn't marry her. Amen. It was your choice. You knew there was going to come a day that she was going to wake up and it was going to be like this. He's the only one that understands. Is a personal will of God. That church is a personal will of mine. It's 1208. Did y'all realize that? <laughs> By the way, who come up here and set and reset my clock after Wednesday night? <laughs> Somebody got real smart. I was, I was I was teaching around here on Wednesday night, and I happened to look down, and I knew I was getting close to 8 o'clock, because from 7 to 8 o'clock, for some of y'all that don't come, it's 7 to 8 o'clock on Wednesday night. <laughs> That's some of that serious sarcasm. Thank you, Miss Tasha. Miss Tasha just quoted my message. Uh, and I picked up that clock, and I knew I had to be close to 8 o'clock, and I picked up that thing and said 7.04. Y'all know the time went up last week. 
Amen. Somebody had to change the clock. Somebody changed it this week. <laughs> Probably one of them that was here Wednesday night. 1209. Listen. <laughs> Y'all getting anything out of the will of God yet? <laughs> but God. It's the will of God, Brother Ken. Your church is not your choice, it's God's choice. Your companion is not your choice. It's God's choice. Blake, come get on the piano for me here in just a minute, bud. Let me say this. For all you in here that God's called, and I don't care what calling it is, whether it's preacher, pastor, evangelist, nursery worker, Sunday school teacher, ladies meeting, missionary, pastor's wife, I don't care what calling it is, that is not your choice. All you men, that is not your choice. Here's what God had to show me this week. That's, that's not your choice. I, I, I made that choice. Now, you're going to have to decide whether you're going to live by it or not. I'm like, but God, you need to decide whether you're going to live by it or not. If I open doors, it ain't up to you to close them. It's my choice. Now, if you, now if you, don't, if you don't go... And you don't do these things. Listen, you, you, you can decide to be out of the will of God. But I don't feel understand. The will of God is personal with God. It's his personal choice. Our careers. Listen to this. Listen to this and I'll close. Our careers, your career, my career is God's personal choice. You know how many people have taken careers over years that has got them out of church and caused them to lose their home and lose their marriage? Let me just ask you this way. Do you think God would do that? Brock, do you think God would stick you in a career today, make you leave, and get you to leave your home, leave your wife there all the time, end up in a divorce? No. God's for the home. God's for the church. I can't not tell you the number of people over the years I've watched down through the years, and young people, come, you young people, listen to me. You listen to me. Blake said it well this morning. And Bud, I ought to just get you to come back up and testify what you told us this morning. It, listen, we, we have sitting here one of the greatest piano players probably in this country. Would y'all agree to that? And Blake's opening this morning, and I know this has happened. I have, he, has, he has come to me uh, on a couple of occasions, several occasions with this, that Blake has had great offers all over this country with worldly music. They were the first ones to probably offer <laughs> Amen. Southern gospel music, southern gospel band all through the country. He had an opportunity to go out in California, I believe it was, Blake. To, to go out in California, is that where it was? Yeah, go out, go out in Hollywood, California, to play for some things out there. He had that opportunity. The opportunity was on the table for him. And Blake said this this morning. He said, I got to the place where I felt like I was good enough to do that. And he wanted to do it. But he had to realize it wasn't God's career for him. Wasn't God's career. Why? Worldly. It's going to take him out of church. Amen? It's going to take him away from his family, away from his home. Now, do people have careers they leave their family? Oh, yes. But I want to tell you something. God has that choice. When we decide we're going to make that choice, we get out of the will of God. The first thing we have to ask ourselves, is God in this? Is this a decision God would make for my life? If it's going to tear you away from your church, it's going to tear you away from God. It's going to tear you away from your family. You and your family are going to have problems because of it. Can I just go ahead and answer that for you? Go back to the printed word of God. You'll find that God ordained a home before he ordained anything else. He ordained a home. Amen. And God ordained the church. Amen. Even after he ordained the home. Amen. All that's ordained of God in the printed word of God, in the printed will of God, it's found in there. And then there's that personal, personal will of God for us. Even in our careers and what we're going to do for God. That we ought to stop and think, God, is this you? Is this you pushing me to do this? If it is, do it. Do it. Don't stop. 
But you better make sure that it lines up with the personal will of God and the printed word of God for God to bless it. Amen. God desires for us to be in his will. He said it is his personal will concerning you. Your will is not a concern for my life. My will is not a concern for your life. But God is concerned with you and your life. In your will, in everything that you do. Young people, I pray you listen to me today. Please, please, please listen. Some of you already got your mind up. I'm going to do this. I'm gonna. You better ask yourself now. Is that God's will? Or is that what I want to do? Are we going to take a chance and ruin our life? Ruin our life being out of the will of God. Because I'm telling you, if you ever get to a point, you want to do anything for God? You're going to have to find his will. You're going to have to understand his will. Understanding his will sends us to the printed will of God. It sends us to the personal will of God. Tonight, I'll try to help you with this. There is a perfect will and a permissive will of God. Can I say this? There is a progressive will of God also. I will tell you that. It's found in the word of God. I pray I can help you with that tonight. If there's one place I want to be, that's one thing, thing God's done for me this week and this week alone that God had to settle me. God had to get me in a room by myself. God had to get me on my knees. God had to get me to shed in tears. And God had to get me at peace with him over some things that, hey, are you going to love me? Are you going to labor for me? Are you going to let me be your Lord? Or are you going to do it yourself? And if you want to do it, go ahead, but that's not my will for you. You don't get to make the choice of my will. You only get to decide whether you're going to live in it or not. Amen? His choice, his will is not our choice. Let's all stand up here today. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I 